All right, I was just minding my own business, changed the oil in this truck, putting the oil in, and all of a sudden I see this. What is that? What's that pink stuff? So, from further research, my fluid is actually pink. My coolant, that is. Yeah, that's my coolant. So that can only mean one thing, that is a water pump. Now it's doing that because it's probably broken, it's trying to pump through and it's not pumping. So that's a big problem. So we're gonna have to fix that. So if you don't know, you wanna figure out the correct motor. This is a 2007 Toyota Tundra, um, 4.7 liter obviously, and SR5. And you want to know if it's the correct, the, the dealer is going to ask you, or when you do your research, what size or what type of motor you have in here. And it will say right here, if you look up on underneath your hood, mine is a 2UZFE. So we'll order the parts, we'll get, we'll get the water pump, which is this one right here. But the problem is, and this is going to be my first time, and you've seen it on this channel. You know, I do some stuff on my own, but this is going to be a little challenging. This is going to be involve the timing belt. And what I saw on YouTube land, it shouldn't be too bad. I think it's bad when it's broken, but it shouldn't be too bad because it's we're just changing out the belt. We have to just uh, make sure we line everything up appropriately. That's the only thing I would let you know about. So we're ordered the water pump. I recommend using OEM products. Like I know I, I, I use aftermarket products in the past, but these things like you, if you're deep in the, the motor, you're taking a lot of stuff out, the time belt, stuff like that, like a starter or I recommend getting a uh, OEM. If you can't afford it, then go ahead and get a uh, remand or some kind of aftermarket product. But definitely I'm gonna use OEM in this. It'll be a little more expensive. I see on Amazon. You can get the whole kit for like under a hundred bucks, but we're gonna use OEM in this. You should get new pulley, new tensioner and all that stuff. We'll get a new belt too. So I'll use OEM belt since I'm here, in here. That's the only reason, but do as you wish. Don't do as I say or do as I do. I am not expert in the means and I have read it. This is a disclaimer. I've never done a car. I'm not ASC certified. I am just a guy internet working on his car in the driveway. So. Water pump, water new thermostat. Of course, we need some coolant to refill this back up. We're gonna have to drain this and some pulleys, and we'll get started. Not sure how much everything costs and uh, kind of lay everything out just like in every every video I do. I kind of lay out everything so you know what type of tools you need before you start on the vehicle instead of going starting on the vehicle and not having tools already available. That way, you can get your car back on the road as fast as possible. Again, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, this is a cost-saving channel. All right, stick around. All right, before you start on this uh, water pump, which is kind of, it's a challenging uh, work, but you have the time and you have a spare car, uh, you should be able to do this, do it yourself. And then I just watch everything online, YouTube, everything. So if you haven't said it, I'm not a professional mechanic by any means. Uh, this is a finance channel and cost saving channel. So just trying to help you save some money doing this yourself. Easily do this job will cost a thousand dollars or even more to just have this stuff done. Uh, just labor without parts. These are parts you can find on Amazon for cheaper. All right, tools you're gonna need to get this job done. Uh, I got a 10 millimeter Allen wrench socket, a 3 inch drive there. Take out the time belt tensioner, a half inch uh, compact impact driver from Amazon, a 22 millimeter impact um, socket, extension with socket, a 14 millimeter impact uh, socket. My all time favorite, needle nose plier, 3 8 uh, ratchet, a couple sockets here. I got a 12 millimeter, a 14 millimeter, a 10 millimeter, and I have another 12 long, uh, actually 14 millimeter deep socket 12 millimeter a 
extension. Uh, we'll go over those tools from Amazon in a second. Uh, my Alton other favorite is PB Blast. Uh, not sponsored by any of these products, unfortunately. Uh, great stuff to get uh, any rusty bolts out. Highly recommend it versus uh, other products that's out there like uh, WD-40. So these, this is a better choice. A little stinky, but it does a great job. A half inch uh, torque ratchet. Highly recommend it, especially doing a crankshaft. This tool is to take out the uh, fan clutch. You need this to take out the fan clutch unless you, you can finagle a flathead and kind of prevent it from spinning. I highly recommend this tool. A RTV gray uh, gasket maker. You can get it at a local automotive place and this will cure in 90 minutes uh, based on humidity. If it's really humid, I wouldn't recommend putting the fluid in and wait, you know, X number of hours before you actually put fluid in. Uh, a pair of pliers, safety goggles, flashlight, gloves, and pink. OEM uh, radio fluid. I'm gonna change the thermostat since I'm here. So you're gonna need this to, if you don't have impact, you're gonna to have to use this tool to get the uh, 22 millimeter bolt that's holding the uh, chromatic balancer pulley or crankshaft pulley. Cause this spins fast enough where the chromatic pulley will not spin as you rotate it out to the left, lefty Lucy. This tool will help you do that, but also this tool will help you take out the pulley after you're done taking out that middle bolt. Great tool to have. This is also from Amazon. Um, recommending using this tool. I don't rec actually recommend using these, supposedly, uh, based on the reviews. These are made for uh, metric, but I don't think they they fit right. So I recommend using this in combination with this to get the harmonic pulley out. Uh, unless you can wiggle out, but I haven't seen that yet. Uh, all right, let's go. Let's go back to parts. So the parts going to replace. I am going to replace the uh, serpentine belt tensioner. So I like using OEM. Uh, there's cheaper products out there at Amazon. You can you know purchase at your own means. But here's the belt tensioner for this time. So I got 2007 Toyota Tundra 4.7 SR5. Is what I have here. Um, I guess extra cab four doors so here's the tension that goes with this and here's the water pump uh, again you can get the Amazon version there but I want OEM so the OEM kit comes with the, the gasket pretty cool gasket so the gasket is aluminum and see that brown edge that's actually gasket um, a rubberized silicone so you don't actually need to put any kind of RTV silicone it'll seal itself and here's an, also an OEM uh, timing belt. I recommend getting the OEM time belt because it has hash marks and tells you where to put the crank. So this one will say crank. This will say left cam. So the one from Amazon does not have that. So not that, that it's a great uh, all-in-one package, but it doesn't have those hash marks, which you're gonna need if you do the time belt. And uh, here's the part number for the time belt. For this particular truck, and I said it comes that this um, water pump actually comes with the bolts, um, two seals, uh, the gasket for the water pump. It does not come with the time belt, the time belt was separate. And so here's the uh, Amazon version here. So this I bought pretty cheap, 130 bucks. So the reason I bought it because, oh, before I go on, I also want to change the uh, time belt tensioner. Here's the Toyota version. So I'm going to use the Toyota OEM product. Um, so I just want to compare and contrast. This is the Amazon version. So this comes in the whole kit. So this kit is like 130 bucks. It comes with the uh, time belt tensioner, um, pulley, another pulley, and it comes with the uh, a new fan clutch so that's the reason i bought it because i want a new fan clutch anyway because it's kind of ugly and dirty in there but um th that's it you can find the amazon for cheaper or you can get the oem which i have fair warning if you're going to do this job it's going to take you about a week i'm not a mechanic so i can't do it within four hours whoever can do it four hours then 
good for you. And like I said, I'm not an expert in immune, so you're taking, you're watching this video. It's just for entertainment. Um, it's for education. It's not, I'm not an expert. This is no way an instructional video on how to do things correctly. So good luck at your own risk. I'll see you. All right, I'm gonna stop taking things apart. Just to cover, get rid of the air, air box intake. We wanna to get to there, that's where we wanna be. That's where the water pump sits. So, word of caution, work on the, work on it when the car is nice and cool, it has been driven all day, so. Yep, that's my advice. These are acorn nuts, these are 10 millimeters. We'll take it out and then we'll place it back the way we don't, we don't lose it. It's just a cover. If you see my other video, I did change the um, secondary air intake on this. So I did take these apart when I did that. These are also 10 millimeters. Finger tight. I think I was supposed to snug that up. I think I forgot. I'm gonna drain the antifreeze into this bucket. So we're gonna open that valve. Turn to left and should drip. All right, once we drain the radiator fluid, we'll start coming back up top and we'll get the rest of this because this probably has fluid in it. Disconnect that hose right there. So that's the lower hose. I'm gonna disconnect that. Let all the fluid drip into the pan here. So that's where that's gonna come out. So these are nice and crispy, so we're gonna replace with these new ones here. And I like these. I don't like the aftermarket uh, hose clamps with the uh, 10 millimeter ratchet on thing. I want to go to just go with OEM. So more and more, I'm trying to use more OEM stuff. Sorry guys. I do try to save money, but uh, certain things I don't want to skip on, so. All right, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna disconnect this part of the hose. The bottom one's disconnected. We'll take this one off, take more fluid out, and then we'll work on this upper one. Right here, so we'll take this off. And then for the fan shroud, there should be, um, I wanna say 10 millimeters here, and 10 millimeters here, just for the shroud. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, that's half my problem right there. So this one broke on me. You can see it's kind of rusty. Typical New England weather. All right, these are the ones that hold the thermostat. These are 12 millimeters. Valves, a hose, this should pop right out. This is sealed in with a bleed or not, just an O-ring. And you just uh, push it in, keeps it sealed. Oh, come out, there it is. Oh my goodness. Ta-da. We do everything by stages. If you don't know, know already, I'm doing the, this car in stages because not that I'm in a hurry, but I can only work on this car for so long. I do work full time. So I'm driving that bad boy right there until this bad boy gets fixed. But I'm just plugging stuff up because I want nothing going there. So here's the tool, right for Amazon. There's a couple of tools out there, but they're kind of like this one. It's pretty sturdy. So I got one of them up. Let's go with this one. I'm kind of digging this one. We have success. All right, all four bolts out for the fan. Now we're gonna 
disconnect the shroud too at the same time. There's only two bolts. Oh, that's easy peasy. TV Blast, you watching? Sponsor boy over here. Best stuff there. Best stuff they got up in the market. Uh, what is in the ingredient, but that thing, it works. PB Blast is the bomb. Forget the rest, those WD-40 guys. Ain't got nothing on PB Blast. Ugh. Fan off. Wiggle it. Wiggle, wiggle. There's, here comes the fan. The shrouds can come along with it for the ride. Oh, we're hooked on something. On a Let's get the fan out. So we're going to turn faces this way. Couplings go that way. Come on. Come on, Papa. There we go. All right. Now we're cooking. Let's see. So my research, everybody says the toughest part was getting this 22, 22 millimeter crankshaft pulley to break loose this bad boy right here. So I have a DeWalt half inch drive impact wrench, midsize. If it can reach from here to here, we're good. We don't have to move the radiator. All right, so DeWalt, bought this from Amazon. It's actually cheaper on Amazon. I think at the Home Depot is like, $199, but it's from Amazon, $150, free shipping because Amazon. And then this 22 millimeter short impact socket is from uh, yours truly, Walmart. So, I don't know, 10 bucks. Let's see, multiple, multiple truth. Can we fit this thing in here? Oh, your boy is pretty slick. So, we're planning clearance. We're not going to take out the radiator. And this 4.7 uh, SR5 Toyota Tundra 2007-2009, that impact has plenty of clearance. So I'm not gonna mess with the radiator. If any, I'll just flush it with some uh, coolant, some, I mean, some garden hose, just to get all the kind of particles out of there. But we're, we're good. We're gonna take note of the serpentine belt. I'm gonna draw that out. Right, I got one from TRQ. Totally reliable, something, something. Comment below what they stand for, but they're pretty cool. Those guys are pretty cool, so I point theirs out. But unfortunately, this does not match mine. As you can see, TRQ looks like that. Mine looks like this. I know, you're admiring the artwork. I know. But see how mine is looking? It's looking more like my drawing. Not that one. I don't know what that's all about. I think it's probably a 5.7 up top, but the mine's a 4.7. So a little pro tip, you want to draw it out or take a picture of it. That way you remember how this will go. So this is a 14 million. We're gonna crank it left, I believe. Again, from uh, Amazon, good tool to have. So I got a good leverage here, pulling so you can see the belt's already being loose. Uh-huh, pretty good, huh? Everything come out so easy. That was coming off like butter. Here's the, uh, my new power steering. If you've seen that video, i show you how to fit, replace that. Same thing with the alternator. It shows how to do the alternator on that. That's a funny story in that one. Check out that video. How <laughs> they're not ignored it. the engine light because it'll leave you stranded. So check out that video, how I replaced the alternator. Uh, and that one, that's OEM too. That's not uh, Reman, it's the original, I believe it's Denso that makes the products for Toyota, OEM. So 14 millimeter, hit up the impact, and then take this uh, out with the regular ratchet ratchet. There we go. Nice. Pro tip, when you're talking about left to right camshaft, uh, it's 
from the driver's perspective. So you're sitting in the truck, this is the passenger side. If you're on the driver's side, this would be the left side. So left side is passenger and driver's side, right side is passenger side. A pro tip I also got from one of the other guys, I'll, I'll leave the link in the description below. But you want to outline your water pump. So as the bolt come out, you want to put it, the bolts where they came out of, because they're short ones and long ones. Another option is when you take out the, the bolts from the old one, just place it on a new one. So that way when you put it back, you know where it belongs. And these are going to be 10 millimeters. I'm going to take the covers off. Let's shift the cover. All right, kind of went around. 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters, 10 millimeters. So there's a 12 millimeter, big long ones here, one there and one right there. They're the same size. I'm just gonna keep them close together. As we look at the diagram, just make sure you put them back where you found them. So it's just a cover. This comes off like so. There's the time belt. Very crusty in there. We're gonna spray it down with some uh, cleaner. Make sure that's clean. Tuck that back right there. And this one comes off too. It's just a little cover. Same thing. Just jiggle it out. That's where the issue is. That's, that's the, out of the water pump, folks. So I don't want to make this video longer than it should. So the idea is to take all this stuff apart because the water pump is behind here. There. So we're going to get all these. This is a 12 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Uh, they're mostly 12s, 10s, and 14s. That's the three you'll need. Um, you may have to drop the alternator that's there because these are behind each other. So you may have to get to it there. So I'm going to have to get it to there. Those. And the same goes here. We're going to have to get to these. Uh, maybe we'll move the pulley, we'll get to this one. And there's more here. Take every single one of these things apart. And, uh, I want to make this video longer than it should, so we're going to keep going here. There it is. All right, a couple of updates. I removed the pulley. So these are. Uh, 14s, one here, one here, and one right between. So the trick to this is we'll put the socket between. I've seen my other video how I replaced the power steering pump. Just put a socket between there, like so. And that's how you take it out. There's three of them, so 14 here, 14 here, and there's one right down here. And like my trick is, my pro tip is to put everything back. So that way you can put everything Together, you know where all the bolts are. I also took out the alternator down there. So those are being held up by uh, 14, 14, and then another one right over here. Another 14. So you can take all that out. You get to remove the serpentine belt tensioner. So this slides right out. This is being held, this is holding the alternator, so I'm gonna take it out. I just put that there too, as a placeholder that way. When I put things back, I know where things go. So, let me move this out of the way for a second. You should be able to pull up the uh, serpentine tensioner. So I have trouble taking out the harmonic balancer. So, but there's a couple screws on there, see these two screws. What you can do is get the harmonic puller from Amazon. And again, not for on Amazon. Or you can get it from your local automotive store. And screw that into those two holes there and there. And you kind of put a bar that goes across. It's going to tighten up. As it tightens up, it'll pull the uh, harmonic pulley out. All right, so that's what a harmonic puller looks like. So you've got the two bolts. I got two bolts to hold it in. As this goes in, it's gonna extract the crank puller on the way out. And then use the bolt from this thing right here, the um, crank puller holder for 
from also from Amazon. I just used that bolt. It came with the package. So I just use this. It fits in that pulley just fine. So as I turn in, it's coming out. That's it. It's coming out, folks. So, like I said, pro tip is as you're taking the bolts out, line them up with the new ones. So whatever bolt you have, put it on the new ones. Come out easily here. There we go. A slip wire there. It's gonna go right through there. For this sensor right here. So this cover can come all the way up. So this is the, I'll put a label on here, driver's side. All right, so here's the problem. This fan clutch, which is in front of the water pump, is attached to the AC compressor. So that is held up by AC compressor, which attaches here. It's actually that problem. Eventually we do need to we do need to take this out. But this compressor needs to move out of the way. So this fan clutch. So this fan clutch can come out. Alright, pro tip to get the compressor out. Remove your front tire. And move the flaps that's covering this. Now you can get to the bolts. One there. One there, the third one in the back, which is that one. And so it's gonna be 14 millimeters all around. All right, so the little piece here, a little pro tip. I'm gonna slide that little piece out. And then the crankcase cover. Crankcase cover should be gonna come off. So, good thing though is this little dot here, which I broke the little, it was a stubby thing sticking up. That little dot um, points to zero. Or uh, when you set it, before you, you set it to zero, you kind of forward set it because the cams are preloaded, if you want to understand. When you take it out, so that way it'll snap back to zero after we put the, the new timing belt back in. You're seeing it. It all makes sense, but this needs to come up, this little thing here. All right, <clears throat> couple pro tips here. So, um, before you take out the harmonic balancer, I'm gonna show you how to use the uh, harmonic balancer removal toolkit I got from Amazon. You wanna put the, all your crank pulley, um, your right camshaft and your left camshaft to top dead center. So you can see now, I put a, put a 22 millimeter um, torque wrench on here and turn it as so that the hash mark here lines up with zero and you'll see here it's barely noticeable you have to little hint is it's the gold usually the gold uh, bolt but there's a whole bunch of gold ones there too so this gold bolt will have a little hash mark here you can zoom in here see the hash mark so that hash mark if you line up with that not the T the T is for timing when we actually put in the so we advance it forward more it's because these are spring loaded. Uh, we want to be a little bit ahead, that way when it springs back, put the um, belt back on and the tension back up. So here's the hash mark here again. Little hash mark there, it's barely noticeable, but it's there. You can zoom in on that. And you should line up with that right there, that mark, not that mark. And you see on the left cam, this has a very distinguishable green marker here lines with that marker not the T again not the T not the T okay here not the T there you go. so so this points to zero 
There should be a little hash marks, very noticeable, very essentially noticeable. Right there, you can see it there where my thumb is. A little tiny hash. Right there. So that's the little hash, and it lines up with the green here. So that means you're in top dead center on the left cam, right cam, and also on the crankshaft. So that's dead center. <clears throat> so because we're gonna give it a new belt, these are spring loaded. These cams are spring loaded. We're gonna advance it forward to the T. That's where we start to time it. So we're gonna advance this hash mark there to the T. We'll advance this one too, this green, to the T. And a little pro tip here, we'll advance that hash mark. Used to be a little stubby thing here, but I broke it. You're gonna advance this hash mark to the little stubby thing here. And that way when you put the new belt in, because it's spring loaded, it'll spring back to the zero top dead center. Then you can remove the harmonic balancer pulley. So don't remove the pulley, don't remove the tensioner until all of these are uh, zeroed out or calibrated. That way your timing is accurate because uh, there'll be a lot of trouble. I don't know how to do that. So we're simply changing the belt, so we should be good. Uh, we're not mechanically messing anything up. So stay tuned. Okay, so we advanced the forward to get our timing right. And again, there's the hash mark. I did highlight with the Sharpie so you can see it more better. Right to the T there, because we're this is spring loaded. And we take off the belt, so the belt has to be taken off. Same here, to the T, not to the hash mark. The hash mark is for the actual timing when it's all said and done. And you notice down there, the crankshaft lines up that little nubby thing we talked about. So when you turn this with the uh, 22 millimeter uh, torque bolt, if you line this up here, that will line up this. We'll line up this, and we'll line up this one too. So we're good to go. So we can take out the harmonic balance. All right, since we have the right camshaft um, covered to the time mark there, we have the left or driver's side cam uh, to the T there with the green mark there and a little hash mark that we talked about earlier, right about there. And if you notice, the, I put out the harmonic pulley and another key indicator to make sure you're in the right position is this little nubby thing should be aligned with this bolt here. That tells you everything is in uh, perfect timing. So now we can start uh, pulling out the timing belt tensioner, which is here. So this is the tensioner here. This is the tensioner here. There's uh, two 12 millimeter bolts that hold this in. I'm gonna back them out one at a time and uh, release the tension on the uh, time belt. So there is the uh, time belt uh, tensioner. It's being held up by two 12 millimeter bolts. So you're gonna back them out one at each time, left, right, left, right. So you give it a, ba a balance so that way you don't strip the uh, threads as you're coming out. Okay, once the uh, time belt tensioner has been pulled out, uh, two 12 millimeters, so you back, just back them up. So once the time belt tensioner has been removed, it was there, we took it out. We removed the time belt uh, tensioner with the Allen wrench, the 10 millimeter Allen wrench. Uh, we're gonna replace that since it came with the Amazon kit. And also we're gonna replace the um, idler pulley for the belt, the time belt tensioner. This is a 14 millimeter. Place this uh, idler pulley also on top of that. Get the idea? I'm not going to film that part. All right, so I've taken out all the bolts from that holds the water pump. So I'm just going to pop it out. It should come out easily. So what I did was I transferred every single bolt to a new one. So I know exactly which bolt goes to which. So when we put the new one in, we'll switch them over to the old, kind of vice versa. That way you don't get confused on which bolt goes where. A little pro tip there.
kind of failed there. You can see. Kind of failed there and there. Give it a new life. And this is what it looks like. So we're going to clean all that up. Clean all the stuff up, this uh, pink stuff. I uh, stuck the rags so that way it doesn't go into the engine blocks in here. And clean it up, and then we're going to spray everything down with some uh, degreaser or some kind of carb or brick cleaner. Just to make it pretty and put it all back together. All right, all cleaned up. I use a razor blade to scrape all that off, the big stuff, and then hit it with the 180 grit sandpaper and then finish it off with a 220 grit sandpaper as much as I could then kind of sprayed everything down a little bit with the um, carburetor cleaner kind of get some of the grease and junk out of there kind of like the carburetor cleaner because it evaporates as soon as you spray it so pretty cool stuff um, and then I did the thermostat so thermostat's all cleaned up too I scraped in Hit it with 220. Um, got a pick and started picking at uh, the inside of this, the recess, to make sure no gunk in there. And same here. That's where the uh, the big uh, gasket's gonna go. And yeah, we should be ready to rock and roll. So the gasket's in. Just lubricate with a little bit of uh, antifreeze. New gasket for the water pump is going in now. Uh, so we'll be sure we're gonna put everything together. So I'm gonna try to film as much as I can, but highly unlikely. It's just doing opposite how we took it out. So put it all back together. Uh, putting some uh, ATCs on each bolt, and just like we put on tires, you kind of go across from each other. Put one there, put one there, put one there, put one there. So idea is to go across. So here, 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 here. And the kit does come with the new, new uh, five bolts there. So there's five of those. And the reason is five of them here. Um, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five. Gray RTV cure. I may film that part, putting the uh, thermostat back on. Uh, let that cure for 90 minutes is what they recommend. And then you can start adding fluids. Meantime, I have to return that thing back to the rent the car place. So um, in the meantime, we can return the car and we'll get this cured and then we'll put some fluid in. I'll show you how to bleed the fluid. So next clip, we'll have everything together and uh, possibly I'll show the thermostat. I'll bleed the system uh, with some anti-coolant, I mean some coolant. So keep going. So water pump is 15 foot pounds. So here's our setting. We got 15 foot pounds here. And we got this from Amazon. Yeah. All right, putting back the time belt back together. Make sure these are lined up with this. So right cam is pointing right there. Yeah. Left cam again. Left is a uh, driver's perspective. So you're the driver. You're on the left side. Uh, driver's side would be the left. So a little pro tip here. Put this on after um, everything's in. So I got a little wedge there. Yeah, a little pick wedge everything lined up and then and then install the idler pulley it's actually easier because it kept coming off centered um so a pro tip put this on after the belt goes on making sure all these uh, hash marks are lined up perfectly there perfectly there you can see that there perfectly there see the wedge i put in with the uh, little pick so your arrow the word crank the arrow should point right to um, that little circle there. So you point to that little uh, hash mark there, right there. So the two circles, um, the I mean the tapered screw should go in between those two hash marks, and the word CR CR crank should point right to that little indicator there. So I got the little wedge pick wedge to keep it in there. So start from the bottom, go all the way to the top. As you come up top, line up the Driver side left crank, make sure that's lined up with this. That lines up. There, to there, to the T, and right to the T. 
and then put the idle pulley in. Do that after everything's lined up. It make your life look much easier. I was trying to figure out how to put it in without throwing up the line, throwing off the, um, the alignment. All right, I wanted to show you that. I'll put it all together. And next we'll put, we'll torque down the idle pulley to 25 foot pounds, uh, par what I've seen on the YouTube land. And then we'll put the uh, time belt tensioner. That'll be, um, I believe it's 25 foot pounds also. Um, going back and forth like we, how we took it out, we're going to go back and forth um, with the bolts, the 14 millimeter bolts going back and forth, uh, tighten it up and this should get snug. So you want to have this side really snug, really snug, and this is going to really loose because the tension is going to take care of all that. All right, let me keep going here. Time belt tensioner uh, with the Allen wrench will be 19 foot pounds. All right, so I put everything back together. <clears throat> so I put the the cover for a harmonic pulley and I cranked the um, the 22 millimeter crank pulley uh, to get this to set to zero. So once that's done, um, you should see your hash marks line up here at your sprocket to there. At the same time, your left side should do the same. Hash mark there, hash mark there, and oddly enough, this was able to line up also with the uh, harmonic pulley. So, so I found out from uh, DLM Garage, one of the guy I watched, uh, he said, don't panic if these things don't line up after you crank it forward uh, or move the engine, rotate the engine, because this is for initial setup only. These will never line up again but he's saying that it will line up. It'll line up 400 revolutions later, um, but uh, it was only for the initial setup. So don't freak out if this is, does it, as you notice, this is not lined up to the hair. What's more important is the teeth lines up. You can see the timing teeth there matches that. That's all we're concerned about. The timing teeth here matches that. And Lord behold, uh, that, matches up to the top zero so we're good so don't freak out if these things don't line up then when you initially set it up um, that was to help you set it up in the way in the beginning but once you pull the pin the grenade pin uh, everything's set in stone and you're pretty much uh, good to go so don't freak out like i did I was just doing like crazy research trying to figure out why do these things don't line up there's no reason you, you don't need to line it up anymore as long as these line up there there and thankfully there. So another pro tip is uh, you crank this uh, to this pulley bolt to make sure that everything and it should cross over to the T here for this part to to prove that if you put this to the T where you initially set it up, that hash mark should be right at that little nubby thing that I broke right there. That thing, that thing would be broken or you can line up to this uh, pulley idler tensioner pulley you'll see in a second to prove you guys again here's proof that i am still correct here's your initial setup with the t and again you won't see that hash mark line up ever again at least for the next 400 revolutions and initial setup to the t and you can see the hash mark for this one as i alluded to it'll line up with this or you can line up with this bam all right, pro tip there guys, don't freak out. These will never line up again. It was only that the initial setup. All right, now how much I can film. I'm losing daylight here. So for the fan clutch, um, I think that's 12 um, millimeter um, bolts like these. Uh, 12 foot pounds is what I gathered. And it's 14, it's 24 foot pounds. One there, one down there. So make sure those are torqued up to spec. All right, I'll put that together. So I sealed this overnight. It's pretty hard now. Got that gray TV on there. Covers the back now. Both covers. Hoses are mostly connected. Uh, parallel steering. Uh, alternator back on. Uh, AC compressor back on. Bolts are on. Uh, fan clutch is back on. 
and I torqued everything to spec. And the last thing is to put the harmonic balance on. So I'm using a tool I told you about when we took it apart, the harmonic uh, pulley, I mean harmonic uh, bracer there. So that's how we have it set up. It's a half inch uh, torque bar or breaker bar uh, connected to my impact wrench from uh, DeWalt. So compact one half inch drive with 22 millimeter. Recommended the uh, torque is 181 pounds, foot pounds as the torque this down. So we're gonna fold onto this. We're gonna hit with the impact and we'll come back with the uh, torque ratchet, which is that right there. So pro tip I got from uh, JL Garage, I think, JL DIY. So he uh, recommended putting the serpentine belt on first before putting the fan clutch and the fan shroud back on. So the way I bleed is I fill up two of the uh, one gallon uh, Toyota OEM half 50-50 uh, pre-diluted. Just throw it all in there. So there's two of them in there. Um, I'm just gonna turn over the engine and let it run through and get all the air out. Uh, and then drive around for a little bit. If I need to add more, I'll add more. But that's how I let the air out. I don't know if it's the correct way to bleed it. I comment below if that's the correct way to bleed it. So that's the way I do it. I'm not saying I'm doing the correct way. So uh, I'm just doing my driveway. Some guy just trying to help you save money on the internet. All right. I'm just gonna let that pump through. Some of the effort part of it. So I can see it, see or not. Yeah. All right, I'll put back together. So if you like this kind of content, we'll talk about personal finance, cost savings. This was a cost saver. This will cost you at least a thousand dollars to have the time belt and the water pump changed on this 2007 Toyota Tundra 4.7 liter. So we did it in our driveway. You know, uh, took about a week. But we get we cost the cost saving is just doing it ourselves, and that way we, we can ensure that the car is running pristine. Subscribe to this channel, and I appreciate every single one of you watching these videos. I'll see you in the next one.